And uh, when you look at Boise State, mm -hmm. uh, preparing for them this year when they have used some two quarterback sy system, you know, how has that changed that preparation? Yeah, it has, no doubt about it. Um, you look, uh, you know, at how effective of a runner Cozart's been. Uh, you know, the way it does stretch, uh, the repetition allocation that you have in your preparation. And, uh, and yet he still completed a bunch of balls, too. I think he's 64 or 65 percent. And then uh, how well Ripon's played, especially the last four weeks. I mean, they've been really, really good on both sides of the ball. You know, defensively, they're in the top 25 in the country in darn near every major category on defense. And then offensively, you just see the production they've had, especially in the last month. And uh, is there something about this matchup that, that has been positive for you guys? I mean, to win three in a row against Boise State, nobody's really done that. No, sir. I mean, it's uh, each, each year's different. And, uh, and I think we know that, too. And uh, how, health-wise, how did you guys come out of Saturday? Reasonable. You know, I think, you know, any time you get later in the year, uh, you're going to have more guys that accumulate some bruises. That's why it's, I think it's absolutely necessary to get in the weight room on Monday, you know, to be able to get in the weight room on Monday and then practice on Monday, too. And uh, what it does, it flushes out some of the soreness that's built up, and it allows you to move forward a better clip, especially once you head into a full pad of practice on a Tuesday. And um, what, what is the importance of qualifying for a bowl game in terms of what those December practices mean and uh, just, just the visibility of doing that? Yeah, for us, we're, we're going we're gonna to work on today's practice. And uh, I think for us, I mean, it's just, you know, the focus, uh, the drive, uh, the way you have to pinpoint each and every detail that we have and how thorough we're going to be, that's what we need to do today. You guys, well, Mark, what, what, quick question about Marcus Bennett. Mm -hmm. You know, that receiver spot is still a little bit in flux. Obviously, everybody's playing. But he is, you know, he's become the consistent starter and probably the most productive out of that group. Yeah, he's how played has he, the How most. has he done that and separated himself in that? Yeah, he's played the most. Um, I do think he's made really, really good improvement uh, across the board, knowing exactly where to line up because we move those guys all over the place in their alignments. Uh, his, a, uh, his route running, I think especially at the top, being able to gain some separation uh, at the top of a route. And like anything, you know, can you get open uh, and, and can you make the catch? You know, and, and do you get open at the right time? Uh, if a quarterback's taking a certain drop or if it's off a play-action pass and that route's got to be a little bit deeper, uh, understanding that precision that's involved. But, uh, I mean, just as a perimeter blocker, uh, just he's really grown – as a player. Coach, you mentioned you look at Boise year to year, but that being said, can you glean anything from last, last year's game here at Falcon Stadium? Very little. I, and I say that from the standpoint, um, you know, there's just been a good bit of turnover really on both teams. So not, not a great deal. With the 815 kickoff in Boise, is there at least a little familiarity now because you had it this week with Wyoming, so now the guys are maybe more into that late, late night mode. Yeah, we're getting broken in. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. No. I mean, we're, uh, you know, and yes, I think it was asked in here, you know, last week, uh, you know, it, it changes to a degree, you know, some of your preparation, I think especially once you get inside of 48 hours. The the turnover battle was a struggle on against Wyoming on Saturday night. Is there anything you can do? The, co the team wise specifically in practice to work on holding the ball better. Yeah, you have to. And, uh, you know, if that's, uh, you know, uh, applying additional drill team or drill time, we're going to do it. And it's, uh, it's such a crucial part of the game. And they weren't, um, you know, when it involves a little bit of it, when you get closer to the ground, uh, there's a practice and there's a discipline that must be carried forth the game day. And defensively, the defense thrives and they, they, they play with a little bit of an attitude when they can get a turnover as well. I, I guess how big of a momentum swing can that be for the offense when they get one? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. You know, when uh, uh, you, know, you said, is there a little bit of momentum? Sure, I think there is. I think probably it also, uh, um, if you're out in the open waters where the sharks swim, does that spill some blood into the water too? I mean, I point on. You're right with turnovers. I noticed watching. I noticed watching Jack Floor had a had a neck brace. Is he okay? 
he is, you know, really, Grant, he's, uh, he's worn that off and on over the last year and a half. And uh, he, uh, he, so he, he is, and he should be able to go this week on Saturday. And with your conversations with Coach Bilicek, his Navy background, and your, was that not a, was that an issue no, come sir. up front? Coach, um, Boise has one of the more unique uh, stadiums with the blue turf. I was wondering your thoughts on that and if you find it distracting at all. I don't think so. I mean, that's uh, if you're asking for a tent or a color um, that's not completely foreign for us, uh, it may be that particular one. There's a little bit around here uh, that's blue too. Um, so no, sir. Well, how about your coaches that are quote unquote up in the sky, though? I mean, you know what I mean? Does that stuff blend in? You're in gray, and you know, do you see what I'm getting at? Yeah, I, I don't think so. You know, I don't. It's, uh, uh, you know, you're able to identify players, uh, you're able to identify jersey numbers, because that is a factor in matchups or maybe calling certain strengths uh, or, or checks, maybe. And we don't have a lot of, you know, a great deal, but I mean, that's, uh, th there, there's not a, there's not a problem or a distraction in that regard. No, sir. Kyle, uh, if you're on the phone, go ahead and fire away. All right. Hey, great, Troy. I appreciate it. Um, you know, this is a, sort of a bigger picture question that I'm not sure applies to you, your program as specifically as other programs, but. Uh, you know, we're about a month away from the December signing period. Um, a lot of these kids making decisions on where they're going to commit, uh, where they're going to play next fall. Um, how has that maybe changed your recruiting operations, um, just knowing that maybe a lot of these guys that you might be trying to get onto your, your campus will, will be, uh, you know, signing with other schools a little bit earlier, um, even if your admission policies are, are a little bit different? Yeah, it has, Kyle. And uh, in fact, we've gone through an awful lot of study, a good bit of conversation, uh, you know, just kind of, you know, your strategic communication that's involved. It has impacted us, too. And uh, we're going to do uh, more December visits this year than we've done total uh, in the last eight years. So uh, absolutely, it's a consideration. In, in general, what sort of pros and cons do you see with this earlier date? Do you feel like you can maybe filter out you know, your, your class a little earlier than, than you typically would, just kind of identifying what it's going to look like? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'll say this. I mean, I, I think there's a good bit of sense uh, w with a December 15th or a December 20th signing period. Uh, and yet, I think where there's not, I think where we're short-sighted is when it comes to the April, May and the the June visits uh, at the end of a junior year. I think there's a, uh, I think th there's some positives in the one. Oh goodness, and there's some real concerns with the other. And I, I don't know, you know, maybe you have a good number of coaches that would share differently when it comes to April and May uh, official visits. I just, golly, I, I, and certainly you don't want to just look at it only myopically from um, your own institution. You know, for us, we want to see a full six semesters and see, um, you know, any of those May or June tests. But I, even at about any other school, you know, there's just not a sport where there's more academic evaluation, more physical development that changes than football. And I think you need to have some sights on what a kid does uh, a good chunk of time a little bit later in his career, too. Right. And, and just a final note, has it sort of felt like you guys have had to really rush these past couple months, like you mentioned, cramming all these visits in, trying to cover all your bases? Is, is, is that something you've had to try to manage as you, as you went? You know, I, I'll say it, it, it does take more time, you know, in terms of your balance, uh, you know, some of your meeting structure. Uh, and yet, you know, everybody's doing it. So it's not like you're gaining an advantage or have a disadvantage in that regard. Right. All right, that's all I need, Coach. Thank okay, you. you bet.